Let's not argue. Let's not fight about the truth because I don't think that anyone out there really knows. This is the deep dive with Adam Roa. Is up, deep divers. Hello, hello. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of the Deep Dive Podcast. Today, it's just me and you. This is amusing. This is one of those episodes where I just talk about some stuff that's going on from my perspective. And as the theme of today is actually, um, th- there is no absolute truth, then you know that this is just my truth. <laughs> I'm going to just say that. Uh, this is my truth. This is what I believe. This is all part of the relative human experience. And you may have a different truth. You may feel differently than I do. And that's okay because that's just as true uh, to you as my truth is to me. My hope is that you have an open mind, which I imagine you do if you're listening to this, this podcast, and uh, that you consider what I'm going to say today uh, for with with that open mind and and really feel into it and find what's true for you. That's that's ultimately what this is about. Before I get into that, I want to let you know that um, in the Create community, if you don't know what the Create community is, it is the collective renaissance of education, art, transformation, and entertainment. We have live streamed online classes happening every single day. Things like yoga, breath work, singing lessons, cooking class, open mic nights, uh, lots of discussions with, with different thought leaders and influencers. And it's incredibly special and it's free. It is available to you for free. Go to thecreatecommunity.com to take part in that. And we have just launched our premium membership. Our premium membership is going to give you access to premium classes and also premium events, as well as some monthly offerings from our epic world-class facilitators. Literally, uh, people who I have hand-selected who have come in, they lead workshops around the world, they lead retreats, they are high-end one-on-one coaches, and uh, they have joined forces in this super team and will be leading their premium events uh, starting June 1st. We are in an early bird window right now, so if you head over to thecreatecommunity.com, you can get some more information and join because your first three months are 50% off. And also there is a 14 day money back guarantee. So there's, there's like no risk for you trying it, seeing if it's a fit for you, uh, and, and becoming a member of this community. We really want you there, whether it's in the free level or the premium level, we would love to have you. So, um, head over for that. And then again, if you really like this podcast, if you get value out of it, I ask that you please share it out post it on social media, send it to a friend and uh, leave a review, subscribe, all the the good things to really help with the algorithm and get this thing into more ears or more eyes so we can spread this information. Again, my truth, my opinion, there is no absolute truth. (laughs) And that's today's topic because I posted on social media recently uh, a post that was a line from a new piece of poetry I've been working on. And that line says... Everyone is fighting about what's true, but no one actually knows. So what are we actually fighting about? And that is based in what I've been seeing around the conspiracy theories around this pandemic and 5G and vaccines and Bill Gates and all of that stuff and people reaching out to me. I've, I've become someone and I really am so grateful to to be seen this way, but, I, but I'm someone that people reach out to and say, I want your perspective on this. Will you watch this video and let me know? And the truth is what I see right now happening my belief around this is that no one actually knows what is going on. We can have theories, whether they're conspiracy theories, whether they're scientific theories, um, we can have theories and at the same time, no one actually knows. Your brother-in-law who says he knows someone in the CIA who said that there's this you know, crackdown on the Illuminati pedophilia rings, how does your your brother-in-law know that? How would he know that? And the the Illuminati pedophilia rings that are so powerful not know that. And then your 
whoever um, who works for the telecom company who knows that 5G is uh, a mind control device that is being implemented by a one world order government conspiracy. How do they know that? What do, what are they basing that on? All the people who are saying that the coronavirus is not a real thing, like, and then you have all of the people who are in hospitals who are seeing people die every single day from it. What, what are we actually fighting about? What are we fighting about? We're fighting about opinions. We're fighting because when I look at these numbers, by the way, the numbers don't lie, right? The numbers can be fudged. The numbers can be, but it's our perspective on the numbers that I'm talking about. We look at the numbers of deaths, look at the number of cases. We look at the rate um, that at which the the infections are doubling. We look at the the way in which it spreads and we can interpret those numbers a number of different ways. Some people are saying this is this is the first of a couple waves and the second wave could be even worse. Some people are predicting that we're already past the the height of the bell curve and it's time to start opening everything up. Um, it's even with those numbers, the interpretation of those numbers is differing. Watch a movie like Plandemic, which is a documentary film that uh, was made by a friend of mine, actually, someone that I've worked with professionally, that I know personally, Mickey Willis. And I I trust Mickey. I think Mickey's a, a good human doing good work. And his documentary is well-made. It's It gets into your emotional experience. It really gets under and, and he knows how to make films. He knows how to, to get your emotions going and who he's interviewing and the way he's telling that story isn't exactly, uh, like I wouldn't bet on it and say, this is a hundred percent true either, but I wouldn't say it's a hundred percent false either. And so when we're, when we're exploring all of this, when I talk about an absolute truth versus a relative truth, an absolute truth to me is that that truth that there is um, empirically something that is always the case, no matter what. There's no other way that it can could be. It is that way. It is true. And uh, when I think about that. My perspective on it is that there really isn't an absolute truth because even what we say is truth is based off of what we have accepted as being fact. Literally, we have people that believe the earth is flat. We have people who are schizophrenic, who believe that they're hearing people around them that no one else can see. And using those two examples, when I say, no, the world is, the world is round. It's a sphere. Okay. There's an, there's a bunch of evidence that would <laughs> indicate the world's a sphere. I believe the world to be a sphere. I don't believe that it's flat. And yet the flat earthers, they have their quote unquote evidence that the world is flat. They've accepted that as a truth. Their truth that they believe feels just as true to them as my truth feels to me. And so since I don't actually know, do you know what I mean? I don't actually know. I've never been able to determine that this earth is round Empiric. I've never zoomed out and been like, oh yeah, that's that's round. I'm I'm basing it off of the evidence that I have seen, the science that I have seen that says the earth is round. I'm like, okay, great. This is what I'm choosing to believe. But how I live my life is based on what I think is true. And so them thinking the earth is flat for them is their truth. A schizophrenic by the way, their mind, when they're hearing those voices, their brain is firing the same way that my brain fires when I hear voices. So if you were to just look at the scans of our brains, you would think both of us 
are actually hearing voices from from somewhere. But then when you you zoom out and you're you're thinking to yourself, wow, Adam's actually talking to someone and this other person's talking to a wall. One of them is not living in truth. It's not true that they're talking to someone. Only it's only true that Adam's talking to someone. And yet I've had full-blown conversations with consciousness that is not human. I've had conversations with trees. I've had conversations with angels. I've had conversations um, that are, that I would say, some people would think you're crazy. Someone who's never had an experience of conversing with an angel. Like legitimately, like conversation happening in my head you could say, with an angel, or the, I wrote a book, Cosmic Philosophy. If, for those of you who've gotten that book, I know a number of you deep divers have gotten it. It's available as an audio book. It's also available on Amazon. Um, the, that, that book was a channeled text where I had this experience in Egypt and, and met this guy with his apprentice and he's a master and he, he came to my hotel room and they gave me a two hour session and opened up my channel. Every day after that, I would call him. He would give me a five minute attunement, open up my channel over the phone. And then I would write with my eyes closed basically. And, um, just download this information. I ended up putting it into a book that experience people could say that's crazy and yet i felt like i was receiving and almost transcribing what i was being told by by some other consciousness i know what that feels like to me i know how real that conversation with the angel on the beach in maui f- felt to me and so my truth is i had a conversation with a level with a consciousness that um was not human that is my truth. I believe that. And then there are people who would say, that's not true. You can't do that. That doesn't happen. That doesn't exist. Angels aren't real. Well, which is true? Which is actually true? And and so in my, my whole point around the absolute truth, relative truth, is that I don't need to argue with someone to convince them that angels are real. I don't need to argue with someone to convince them that the, the, the person that I'm talking to in the room that they can't see is real. I know that for me, that conversation is real. It is my truth. And because of that, I have begun to live my life in a way where I through plant medicine, through meditation, through various different things, I um, that one conversation wasn't the only one that I have. Channeling uh, consciousness of beings that that are not human is not a rarity for me. And so my life operates as if that is true. And someone who's never had that experience, who doesn't get it, who never has experienced anything remotely close to that, they're going to say, that's not real. That's not true. And instead of arguing with them about it, my I think a far more effective thing to do is say, well, you don't believe it to be true. That's fine. But there's a level of reality that we can agree upon. There's a level of this experience that you and I can actually be in agreement about, which we can call a shared reality. And once we're in that space together, we can build from there. But if all we're doing is staying, if I'm in my reality and you're in your reality and we're saying you're wrong, no, you're wrong, we don't see our common ground, we have no shared reality. If that's the case, we are not going to be able to build a harmonious field of anything because we're starting in two completely different realities. So I think it's far more effective when, especially in this time and this age of digital misinformation where there's videos out there. I saw a video, I was scrolling through and I saw this video and the headline said, 
young mother arrested for letting her kids play on playground. I thought that's, that's messed up. That's not right. And I look at the video and it starts with her being handcuffed and walked off while her kids watch. And it's got this music and go, oh, that's not, I'm not happy about that. And then I go into the comments and in the comments, there's someone who says, hey, here's the rest of the video, by the way, uh, because this is all propaganda. And I watched that video and it shows how this woman, how these cops approached this woman and said, hey, uh, city mandate public playgrounds and parks are closed. We, we can't let you play here. And she gets argumentative and at a certain point dares them to arrest her. And then they arrest her. And I think she definitely deserved to be arrested. 100% and just changed my mind. But it, it shows you that the information that you're seeing out there there's agenda, it's propaganda. Most of it is being cut down and you're seeing it and you're getting these headlines and these comments and stuff to propel certain narratives forward. You propel certain narratives forward. And so instead of just viewing that stuff and saying, well, this is true, like with the pandemic movie, watch the pandemic, think this is all a conspiracy. Then you go into the comments and you realize, oh, there's a whole nother perspective to this backed with statistics. And you go, huh, maybe this whole movie is, is wrong. And then you look at the rebuttals to those comments and there's a bunch of statistics on the other side and you go, wait, maybe it is right. And everyone has their stats. Everyone has their facts. Everyone has their anecdotal story of their second cousin who married this person who used to be in the CIA and then all of a sudden they know because blah, 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 blah. Let's not argue. Let's not fight about the truth because I don't think that anyone out there really knows. I don't think that Donald Trump knows what's really going on. I think, I think that, um, it's, it's fun. It's a fun narrative. It's easy to help ease our feelings of discomfort around the unknown and, and helplessness to have someone or something to blame for the situation that doesn't feel good. We see racism, we see poverty, we see coronavirus, we see whatever. And, and to have something to blame is is easier sometimes than sitting in the discomfort of, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to think. And my whole point around these truths is in, your truth is just as true to you. If you think this is all a conspiracy, okay. If I think it's not a conspiracy, okay, or vice versa. And instead of arguing from the place of standing on two opposite ends of, of the field, let's come to the space where we agree find a shared value and build from there. Let's find the space where what we agree upon is that there is a, a information warfare happening right now where the truth is being misrepresented, if there is a truth, by the way, is being misrepresented by sides who want to propel certain narratives. And if we can agree on that, which I think that's pretty evident, from there, what is our goal? Our goal would be, okay, let's find our way to non-biased information. And let's try and design systems of checks and balances so that we can be in conversation with, with less biased information. Awesome. How do we do that together? How do we do that together? Because by the way, if there is an absolute truth, no human being on this planet would be able to perceive it because all of reality is being filtered through your lens of perception. Everything you've ever been through, all of your past, all of your emotions, everything is the lens through which you're viewing reality and everything that you receive from wherever you get it it is filtering through that lens. That's how it works. It has to be filtered into linearity for you to even have the thought in a way that you can understand it. And therefore, your thoughts and beliefs are not formed independent of your lens on reality, of your perception. So if there is an absolute truth, you won't know it while you're human. 
So let's not argue about what is an absolute truth. Let's say that, okay, your truth is true, my truth is true to each of us, and let's find where we have a shared truth and where we have a shared vision and intention for life and for this planet, and let's work from our shared reality towards a a vision of reality that we would both like to see. That's far more effective. Because if we're arguing for an absolute truth that doesn't actually exist, we will argue for forever. There is no end to that. And if you want to talk about conspiracy theories, what I think would actually be um, the most accurate one is that the powers that be love seeing the people fight in a hamster wheel that's not actually going anywhere, rather than actually banding together to work towards a, a vision that changes the current system. Let's be smarter than that. Let's be more unified than that. Let's be more compassionate than that. And it starts by engaging in these conversations in a helpful way, in a way that that works for people to not feel super triggered or attacked or need to get defensive. Let's do that together. Thank you so much for listening. Please share this out to anyone that you think may gain some value from it. And if you want to be a part of a growing online community that is putting on free events that um, you can be a part of, thecreatecommunity.com. I want to remind you that always, in all ways, you are seen, you are heard, and you are loved. Thank you for being a part of my reality. Reality.